How do chefs stay thin? Some chefs do coke. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Joe Sasto. I'm a chef here in Los Angeles, California. Hi, I'm Jedalyn, and I am a pastry chef based in Highland Park, California. And today we're going to be answering some of the most commonly Googled questions about cooking. Why do you cook lobsters alive? We cook lobsters alive because if you cook them dead, they do not taste good and you want your seafood to be as fresh as possible. You can kill it humanely right before it goes into the water, but you don't want to buy ever dead lobster. What is the best cooking oil? I think it depends what you're going to be cooking. Avocado oil has a pretty high smoke point, so generally that would be the type of oil that you should be using at your house. Grape seed oil is a great neutral oil for high temperature cooking, searing, sauteing. And olive oil is just all purpose and it's good for you. Or, you know, if you're trying to be a little more frugal, canola oil works just as well when cooking. How do chefs stay thin? <laughs> Not every chef is thin, first of all. I think that the chefs that are the thinnest are probably the ones that try to balance the kitchen life with their personal life, so they actually work out and run a lot. I know a lot of chefs that are runners early, early in the morning. There's a lot of time spent on your feet, a lot of time running around, a lot of time eating out of a deli container and skipping meals, not even realizing it. You're working long hours and you know, often you won't eat during those long hours. And some chefs do coke. <laughs> What is the healthiest way to cook an egg? I think any cooking method that would use no additional fat. So you can hard boil it, you can poach it, you can soft boil it. A 68 degree egg, your egg yolk should not be cooked all the way. It should still be a little bit gooey and yummy and a little bit soft. So like a soft boiled egg is pretty healthy, I would say. How do chefs use math? Oh, okay, that's a good question. That's great, great question. I hate math. I'm not really a math person, but chefs definitely use math in the kitchen. If you have to double or triple the recipe or reduce it by half, math goes into that, and the next thing you know, you're doing math very quickly in your head. Chefs use math for percentages. Oftentimes, recipes will have a percent of hydration for doughs, a percent of salt for cooking or brining. So the biggest way that chefs use math is to figure out the percentage of something. How much salt percentage in a water brine, how much vinegar percentage in a pickle, or how much pepper percentage in a sausage. I would definitely say that my math has gotten better being a pastry chef because Doing pastry and desserts requires a lot more measurement and precision than other types of cooking. Should you cook for your dog? Yes, if you have the time, I highly recommend cooking for your dog. Dogs are animals and they need protein and fat. And if you can cook for them, that'll be much better because then you are making sure, just like with human food, that there are no chemicals and preservatives. You can cook for your dog. You don't need to cook for your dog. If you're cooking for your dog, make sure it's cooked well done, that you don't add any salt, that you don't add any oil, that you don't add anything. I hear dogs really like eggs and plain rice. I think that's probably the most commonly cooked meal that I've seen for dogs. So what I hope people will appreciate from my work is that I actually put a lot of love and work into making sure that everything's fully cooked, it tastes great and looks great. It means a lot to me to be able to give it to you and you just really enjoy it and know that it was made with love. I use Google, the internet, every day as a source of inspiration. So all in all, the internet is not all bad. Use Google, take it with a grain of salt, but don't believe everything that you see on the internet.